What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. A few weeks ago I mentioned in one of the Shark Scientist Reacts to Shark Attack videos we did about potentially doing a video on sharks and the colour yellow. Well, there were loads of you in the comments for that video that did actually want to learn a little bit more about it. So today we're going to go a little bit more in depth into the hypothesis. We're going to have a look at where it originated from. We'll learn about the latest research on shark vision. We're also going to have a look at some real world examples of sharks and their interaction with the color yellow and hopefully by the end of the video you'll know whether you're going to have to take those bright yellow swim shorts back to Marshalls. Looking at the animal kingdom as a whole it's long been thought that certain animal species don't like particular colors. I think one of the most common ones out there was bulls and the color red. Matadors are often seen with big red capes taunting bulls who charge at them. Believe me guys I don't really want to highlight bullfighting because I think it's a vile activity but it is one of the most commonly used examples examples of animals hating a color. But it actually turns out it's not true at all. Bulls, along with all other cattle species, are actually colorblind, so it's got nothing to do with the color red and more to do with the movement of the cape. And it's also probably due to the fact they've got some donuts sticking swords into them, so that would be enough for me to want to bulldoze the shit out of the guy. Sharks and the color yellow, though, dates all the way back to the Second World War. The US Navy had seen their fair share of shark attacks throughout the Second World War, most notably so on the USS Indianapolis. But there were other shipwreck incidents or plane crashes crashes where pilots and sailors ended up in the water wearing bright yellow or bright orange rescue gear. Life jackets are a pretty common item that are coloured yellow and it makes sense when you think about it. If you're wanting to be rescued by a nearby plane when your ship goes down, you're probably going to want to be wearing something that stands out against the vast blue colour of the ocean. And yellow and or orange are definitely two of those colours. Stories began circulating that many of those that were attacked by sharks after these incidents were wearing bright yellow. So much so that the soldiers began referring to it as yum yum yellow. After these stories began circulating more during the 1970s, the US Navy wanted some more evidence to try and get to the bottom of it. So they approached Sam Gruber, who was a young marine scientist working out of Miami. Gruber would later go on to become one of the most renowned shark scientists in history, but during the 70s, he was still a very young researcher. Anyway, here's what he had to say at the time. I became interested in the vision of sharks when the Navy came to us with the following story. In an air sea disaster, pilots were wearing orange suits while the crew was wearing green khaki suits. The pilots to a man were attacked by sharks apparently because they were wearing the orange suits while the men in the green suits were left entirely alone. So Gruber back then says the Navy came to him asking him why pilots in down planes who were wearing orange suits were attacked, but those in khaki green suits were ignored. Gruber would go on to show through his naval funded research that like humans, sharks could discern light from dark and do have pretty good vision. His research showed that some shark species had both rod and cone cells in their eyes. Rod cells are responsible for detecting movement and discerning contrast, whereas cone cells are used to render colour and finer details. His research proved to be particularly surprising because all previous literature on shark vision had suggested shark corneas only contained rods and that sharks probably saw the world poorly lit and in a monochrome tone. This is true for deep sea sharks to be fair because at those depths colour and fine detail are less important than being able to sense movement. But Gruber found that this wasn't the case for all shark species. One shark in particular, the great white shark, was shown to have a higher concentration of cone cells in the eye, which meant at the time, of course, they thought white sharks could see in greater detail and theoretically could discern colors better. At the time, Gruber's research was limited by scientific advancements, so he never really went on to discern much about sharks' ability to distinguish between colors. But modern day research has shown that it's highly likely most shark species are colorblind. I say most there because they have haven't examined every single shark species eyeball, but that's what the data points to. One study showed that 10 out of the 17 shark species they analyzed had no cone cells, and the other seven only had one cone cell. Two predatory shark species that were included in that study were tiger sharks and bull sharks. So those two are most probably colorblind. But the great white shark wasn't included in that study. So for white sharks, the jury is still a little bit out on their vision. So the data points to most shark species probably being colorblind, but 
there's still a bunch of anecdotal evidence out there that points to the color yellow being really attractive or hated by sharks. Most famously, the theory of yum yum yellow was actually tested by the Mythbusters around 15 years ago. In their, albeit brief, experiment, which we do have to take with a little pinch of salt, they found that yellow bait bags were both investigated and bitten by sharks more than any other color. Interestingly, silver and white bags here were also shown to generate a decent amount of interest from the sharks as well. We also have lots of other examples from videos that we've seen across the internet, some of which we featured here on Shark Bites. The ones we saw recently included the tiger shark kayak incident, where the kayak is clearly yellow, as you can see here, but also there's lots of other kayak videos where the sharks have been really interested and worked up around a yellow kayak, like in this one here with a very riled up hammerhead shark. But we do have to remember here that correlation does not equal causation. There are also other factors from these kayak videos that have to be considered. With the tiger shark one, it was the nearby dead monk seal, and then also the fact that usually these people are out there fishing, so they've had lines and bait in the water. I do stand by the defensive charge theory for the tiger shark kayak attack, and if you've not seen that video and wanna hear more of my thoughts on it, make sure you click that link in the top right or stick around to the end screen. With this hammerhead one as well, it's again entirely possible that the bait and lines could be enough to rile that shark up, but it is an interesting observation that both of those kayaks are bright yellow. Another pretty famous example is the Mick Fanning shark attack that was caught on camera. So although you can't really see it in the video, the bottom of Mick Fanning's board there is actually a pale yellow color. Here's another picture though of the bottom of his board. You can clearly see it's yellow. And then another surfing example, which we again covered in the last Shark Scientist Reacts to Shark Attack video, Shannon Ainsley, who was attacked by two great white sharks while he was out surfing. What was the color of the bottom of his board? Yep, you guessed it, yellow. Look at that fat bite mark as well out of the back of that board. <laughs> Mick Fanning was so shook up by his shark attack that he actually went on to change his surfboard so that it was no longer yellow on the bottom. He now has a blue bottomed board with dark stripes, as you can see here. So there's examples there of sharks perhaps targeting yellow objects in the water like kayaks or surfboards. But if most shark species are colorblind, then why is this still happening? Surely the color doesn't matter if sharks don't see color at all, right? Well, it's probably not down to the color shades of an object in the water, but more to do with its contrast. We know that sharks definitely do have rod cells in their eyes, which as we learned earlier, are the cells responsible for detecting movement and seeing contrast. So colors that are high in contrast compared to what the sharks are seeing as a dark gray background are gonna be more easily picked up. Let's have a look here then at this example. You'll have to forgive me because it is a very basic example, but it does demonstrate it quite nicely. This is a fish here seen from the viewpoint of something that has monochromatic vision. It's pretty obvious which part of the fish stands out against the background, right? It's this part here. And then when we switch it up to a color version, you can see those bits that I circled with the yellow and white bits. Let's have a look at another example then here on this blue tang. What's the part of the fish that stands out the most against the background? Yep, it's this bit here, right? And when we look at it in color version, you can see that's the bright yellow tail. And then finally, we can see on this example here that someone has mocked up an image of a snorkeler. On the left, you can see what human eyes would be seeing underwater. And then on the right, we can see what a shark might be seeing. And it's clear as day, the black wetsuit and fins blend in a lot more with the dark background compared to the pale white skin against the same background. So you can see that contrast plays a huge role in how visible an object is underwater, especially to an animal like a shark. I can tell you from firsthand experience as well, when I've been out on boats or been in the water with these animals, everybody makes sure that if they've got any bright colors that might be contrasting on their person, they cover them up. There are shark tour operators here in the UK who take people out to swim with blue sharks, and it's a rule on their boats that you can't enter the water if you're wearing anything highly contrasting. They'll tell you to cover up your hands and your feet with gloves and boots, and if you've got a snorkel that's got some color on it, they make you put duct tape on it to make sure that it's completely covered up. It's just a little extra precautionary step that you can take just to try and lower the risk of you ending up with a bite. If I was heading out into the water somewhere where I knew I was going to encounter sharks, I most definitely would not be wearing anything that's bright yellow or bright orange. My wetsuit is entirely black, my mask and my mask strap is black, and my fins are a dark blue and black. The thing is here though, there is an element of a trade-off. 
bright colored gear is obviously going to help you in a rescue situation. Humans will immediately be able to spot something that's yellow in the water compared to something that's green or blue, which is why rescue and life-saving gear is almost exclusively brightly colored because it's just that much more easy to spot it. So there's your trade-off. If you wear those high contrast colors, you're more likely to be spotted by rescuers, but also perhaps more likely to be spotted by a shark. The thing is these days in many places around the world, your chances of encountering a shark are incredibly slim and the dangers of the sea itself far outweighs the dangers of a shark that you might happen to come across. Rip currents and waves are far more likely to cause you problems out at sea than a shark is. And if you're wearing the color yellow, the lifeguards might spot you more easily. But you've got to look at each situation differently. For example, if I was swimming around Reunion Island, I definitely wouldn't want to be wearing the color yellow. Or if I was going out in a boat, especially to swim with sharks, then yeah, I wouldn't be wearing any yellow or high contrasting colors. It's common sense. But if I was swimming around off a beach here in the UK, or say I was off a beach in the Mediterranean, I wouldn't really bother with it because the chances are just so, so slim. So there we go, guys. Those are my thoughts on Yum Yum Yellow. What do you guys reckon? Do you think there's more to this than meets the eye? Oh, yes. What a pun that is. Do you guys think there are sharks out there that aren't colorblind? Let me know in the comments. Please do give the video a like if you enjoyed it, but don't you click off just yet. If you want to hear some of my in-depth analysis on some of those incidents that we spoke about earlier, then you're definitely going to want to click on this video right here. In that video, I analyzed the Shannon Ainsley incident as well as the tiger shark kayak attack and some other crazy shark clips. The Shannon Ainsley one though is absolutely wild. The bloat was attacked by two great white sharks and it was all caught on camera. So check it out here.